In this video, we'll derive the equation of motion for longitudinal vibrations of a bar. What we have in the figure is a bar of arbitrary area, cross-sectional area. In general, this can vary. Um, the x-axis is set up to be along the main axial direction of the bar, and displacements in this direction we'll call u. u, in general, is a function of x and time, since we have a continuous system. And in general, there could be an external force, actually a force per unit length in this case, applied to the bar. I've gone ahead and I've cut out a little piece of the bar and zoomed up on that. That is this diagram over here. So just to look at that for a second. Um, on the left end, we have a tensile force we'll call P. On the right side, the force would be P plus dP. The length of this element is dx. Uh, and the cross-sectional area at each end we'll just denote by A, which in general is a function of X. I've also gone ahead and noted that uh, the area, the Young's modulus, and the density in general are a function of time, while the externally applied force and the displacement are functions both of time and position X. Um, I should also mention that just in the interest of using a bit of shorthand, um, a time derivative will be denoted by a variable with a dot above it. This is d by dt. And a derivative with respect to x will be denoted by comma x after the variable. So the first thing that I'll write out is really the stress-strain relationship. Is sigma is equal to your Young's modulus times epsilon, your strain, which in terms of this system can be rewritten as E times U comma X, du dx. We'll call this equation one. Okay. Um, should also mention that P is equal to sigma times A, P here. So we proceed by using Newton's second law, as we do in most cases. Newton's second law. And we start off with the MA term. So the mass, again, we're looking at this differential element. The mass of that element is equal to rho, the density, times the area, times dx. And the acceleration is just u double dot, d squared u dt squared. Remember that. And that is equal to the sum of all the forces. Well, the sum of the forces is P plus dP minus P plus F times dx, because remember, F is a force per unit length. We can rewrite this by canceling the P's as dP, but dP is simply d p dx times dx. Uh, and then this is plus f dx. Your dx is cancel. And what you're left with is rho, let's close this, times a times u double dot is equal to d by dx, and then we go back to equation one, which says that p, which is sigma a, is e a u comma x plus f. Okay, we'll call this three. This is the equation of motion. Uh, that's simple, but we can further simplify it by saying for a uniform, a uniform and homogeneous bar, wait, I lost this. So for uniform homogeneous bar, well, what does this mean? This means that E and A and Rho are constant.
Then we end up with row a u double dot equals e a u comma x x plus f. Call that equation four. We can then look at the free vibration problem. Which obviously means that the externally applied load is zero. Say F equals zero. Call that equation five. We end up with rho A U double dot is equal to E A U comma X X. The A's cancel, and I'm going to rewrite it by dividing both sides by rho as u double dot equals c squared u comma xx, where c squared is equal to e over rho. Call this equation 6. Equation 6 is a fairly common equation in applied mathematics. It's known as the wave equation. And there are any number of videos on how to solve it. I'm not going to go through the step-by-step -step solution here, although I will show you how it's done. Um, there are numerous videos online showing how to solve the wave equation. If any of you would like to see me do it, uh, put some comments below and I'd be happy to make that video too. Um, but some other places where the wave equation applies is in torsional vibrations of a shaft. Um, it also occurs in transverse vibrations of a string. So if you take a string and pluck it, These all uh, are governed by the same equations, therefore the solutions are pretty similar. Um, let me go a little bit further with this and show you how you would, um, how you would actually solve this. Uh, I'm going to have to do this on a new page. So. Yeah, page. All right, so let me rewrite the equation. The equation says that uh, u double dot is equal to c squared times u comma xx. And we solved this using a method called separation of variables. Which in essence says that the time dependent part and the space dependent part can be separated. Mathematically, we write it like this. We say that u of x of t is equal to, we'll call this capital U, which is simply a function of x times capital T, which is just a function of t. Okay? So what we do, we'll call this equation, I forget what we were, I think that's 7. Yep, equation 7. All right, so it follows from this that u double dot is equal to u of x, since it's not a function of time, times t of t double dot. And then similarly, u comma xx is equal to big U of x comma xx times t of t. If we substitute equation 7 into 6, this is 6 up here, we end up with the following, that um, u times t double dot is equal to c squared u comma xx times t. We rewrite this as, oh, 
let's put the t on the side. So t double dot divided by t, remember these are functions of time, is equal to u comma x x divided by u. These are functions of x. It follows from this that if t is a function of time only and u is a function of x, and they're always equal, this equation is always equal, they must both equal a constant. Turns out that constants we'll call omega squared. I could call it anything. I choose to call it omega squared because I've done this a hundred times and I know that it makes the math a little more compact. The other thing I'm going to suggest is that it's actually a negative value. And we'll show you in a second why it has to be a negative value. But actually, it's equal to a negative constant that we choose to call omega squared. What this, in effect, does is it converts our partial differential equation into two ordinary differential equations. So the first ordinary differential equation says that t double dot minus omega squared, excuse me, plus omega squared t is equal to zero. Call that equation eight. And for u, we get u comma xx plus... omega squared over c squared u is equal to zero. These equations um, are fairly simple to solve. And by the way, let me take a step back. The reason that we needed to call this minus omega is we know that for simple harmonic motion, this sign needs to be a plus. You can get that from our single degree of freedom problem. You can go back and watch the video on that. I'll, I'll put a link to it right here. But fundamentally, for simple harmonic motion, this sign needs to be a negative. If it's not a negative, and it was, excuse me, if it wasn't a positive and was negative, you would get exponential growth or decay. It, it would not oscillate. So we know what the solutions to these equations are. T of t is equal to C1 cosine omega t. Again, this is why I used omega squared as the constant, plus C2 sine omega t. It's equation two. And similarly, u of x is equal to, we'll call it C3, cosine omega x over C, plus C4 sine omega x over C. And as you might recall, for each one of these equations, we need two conditions. In the case of the time-dependent equation, it would be the two initial conditions, uh, saying that we either know the displacement, the displacement field, or the velocity field initially. And in the case of u, it would be your two boundary conditions. What's happening at x equals 0, and what is happening at x equals L. Let's just talk about that quickly. Um, your initial conditions are um, at time equals zero, t of zero is equal to, we'll just call it u zero. Excuse me. It's u of x of comma zero is equal to u zero. And similarly, so we'll call it u dot of x comma 0 is equal to v0. And in general, u0 and v0 are functions of x. For the boundary conditions, there are numerous different boundary conditions depending on the problem. But two of the most common ones are either the end is free or the end is fixed. In the event that the end is fixed, as in our diagram, we'd say that at x equals 0, u, the displacement of 0, comma t, is equal to 0. However, at x equals l, we have a free surface. There's no applied force on the surface, meaning there's no stress on the surface. If there's no stress on that surface, there can be no strain there. So what that means is that u, comma, x at l, comma, t, is equal to zero. Okay. 
And that's it. I'm going to leave it as a lesson to you, uh, as an exercise to go ahead and plug it in and solve for your constants. Uh, as my professor used to always say, if you find yourself shooting pool, do it on the back of a napkin when you have a bit of free time. Again, if you really would like me to create a video showing how to solve this step by step, I'd be happy to do it, although there are several online. Um, again, this is called the wave equation. That is what we're trying to solve. So hopefully you found something useful in this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up so that other people can get to see it too. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.